WrestleMania week is here, guys, and WrestleMania week is now. We are less than one week away, folks, from WrestleMania 33. Of course, I keep hammering it home. I will be there in attendance for the show of shows this Sunday in Orlando. Can't fucking wait. Leaving Friday. We'll be there for TakeOver. We'll be there for WrestleMania leaving Monday. And this week, right now, officially kicks off the... Uh, the, the WrestleMania week, really, for the YouTube channel right here on the Graham G.S. and Matthews channel. Uh, we got the WrestleMania 30 WWE 24 special talking about that here today. Tomorrow on WrestleRant, my full in-depth review one year later of WrestleMania 32, my retrospective review of the show from one year ago. On Wednesday, we got the go-home show of Hashtag Ask GSM. On Thursday, WrestleMania predictions from WrestleRant Radio. On Friday, the random video blog, five things I want to see happen during WrestleMania weekend from TakeOver to Monday to Tuesday SmackDown to WrestleMania itself. Uh, Saturday, Injection of Inspiration, which is always separate. And it's still part of the channel itself. And maybe other content along the way while I'm there, you know, from Friday through Monday. And of course on Sunday, uh, we might have some random miscellaneous videos going up here in the channel as taken at TakeOver and on Friday and on Saturday to Access. So again, just a lot of WrestleMania-themed content going up here on the channel in the next week or two, in the next day or, you know, week or so, I should say. Uh, you know, through next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Friday after that, my random video blog completation of uh, my experience at WrestleMania weekend. So it's going to be fucking incredible. Let's kick it off, though, guys. Like I said, WWE Network and Chill here today, WrestleMania 30, the first ever episode of WWE 24 as seen on the network. Um, just really great, really, really good stuff. I mean, they've done a whole bunch of these, and I've talked about a couple of them before. I've talked about the Seth Rollins one a couple months back. I think the same week that he got hurt, actually. Interestingly enough, um, I talked about the WrestleMania Dallas one from WrestleMania 32. They, they've done one on each WrestleMania. I'm sure they will do one for WrestleMania 33, which I'm already anticipating. The show hasn't even happened yet. I'm already looking forward to the 24 special for uh, for next year. Uh, all of these WrestleMania 24s have all debuted on the network like the day or two after the Royal Rumble from the year later. So like this one debuted like the Raw after... Uh, the Rumble in 2015, right after the fucking terrible shit show that the Rumble 2015, or the Rumble match was in 2015. So it was a saving grace to watch this episode of WWE 24, which was great. Um, and I think WrestleMania 32 and 31, those WrestleMania 24 specials, I think debuted on the network right after the Rumble the next year as well. I know WrestleMania Dallas, that I'm pretty sure WrestleMania Santa Clara, California, whatever the fuck they were calling it. Because, you know, you can't say the number, um, according to Vince. But I'm pretty sure those debuted the week after the Rumble as well. So anyway, um, yeah, WrestleMania 30, which is what this WWE 24 show is all about. We kick it off with the creation of the set for WrestleMania 30, which I thought was pretty great. They really have not had a disappointing set yet, at least not in many years. Uh, for this Mania specifically, for 30, they had the WrestleMania XXX. For, I mean, that was the last Mania they stopped calling you know them by the numbers after that. And in recent years, they've just had the fucking logos. Uh, like last year, it was for Texas. The year before that, they had the play button for California. I think last year was... Um, was I don't know. What was it? I'm going to look it up right now for WrestleMania 32. I try to get that WrestleMania to my mind as much as possible. I know it took place in Texas. Uh, was it like... No, it was... The star? Yeah, the star is what the uh, is what the logo was. The, the set was for WrestleMania 32. But anyway, yeah, so for 30, they talk about the creation of the set. They want to do something special. Um, Big Show is talking about how they have over one, or rather 850 superstar appearances over the course of WrestleMania week. That is incredible compared to the 300 they did for WrestleMania 20 week 10 years earlier. So really going to show how important really these superstar appearances are. And not just for media and shit like that, but like charities and school stuff and, you know, make a wish and uh, be a star. All those other kind of rallies and, and the like, which are always great and cool that WWE does that. Um, we get this great recap of the Connor McCalic, McCulloch, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, um, for the... Uh, the, the Connor's Cure Foundation. I know I'm fucking up his last name, so I'm just going to say Connor from here on out. But you've seen the video package a million times. You've seen the recap a million times. You've seen the footage a million times of him and Daniel Bryan, him and Stephanie, him and Batista. But you know what? It never gets old. It's so touching. It's so cool. For a company that likes to promote themselves, oh, we do all this great stuff. Like, this was a legitimate, cool story. Um, and I'm glad they're still doing the Connor's Cure stuff and all that other kind of stuff. And they put him in the 
for the for the Warrior Award and the WWE Hall of Fame a couple years back. So we get this pretty lengthy video package on Connor because he was in attendance in attendance for WrestleMania 30 that year, and I'll talk about him at the end as well. He comes into play at the end of WrestleMania 30, but that's why he's uh, talked about here because he does some local stuff for WrestleMania 30 that weekend with like the uh, charity stuff they do, whatever. So we go from there to the Hall of Fame. We get this great little mini clip of Hogan, Rock, and Austin, and Jim Ross. You see his cowboy hat. You know it's Jim Ross, but they don't acknowledge him, which isn't surprising because the segment is supposed to be focused on uh, Hogan, Rock, and Austin. Kind of just talking about how great it is to see each other and Hogan being back in WWE. Cool shit. You know, two nights ahead of their epic, uh, you know, segment at WrestleMania that weekend. After that, we have uh, the Hall of Fame recap. Warrior was pretty much the central focus of this. Of course, he would pass away that following Tuesday. Inducted in Saturday, appeared at WrestleMania on Sunday, returned to Raw on Monday, passed away on Tuesday. And as an inspiration of mine, again, a lot like with the Connor stuff, um, seeing the Warrior footage over again for, like again, the millionth time uh, really never gets old for me personally. But yeah, we just get a recap of the Hall of Fame, how great it was. That was a pretty strong class. Other than maybe like Carlos Colon, um, who was worthy in t- you know to our respect, but even him and that was kind of worthless. But you know, regardless of him, we had Lita, you had Scott Hall, Jake the Snake Roberts, Mr. T, the Warrior. Um, so yeah, you had a lot of good, a lot of good inductees in 2014. So I'm glad they got a recap of that. Uh, from there, we get the inside scoop on Triple H's entrance. And the funny thing about this WWE 24 special is that r- literally seconds before I started watching it, I just got finished watching WrestleMania 30. You don't have to watch WrestleMania 30 before you watch it. If anything, I wouldn't even really recommend it. I mean, WrestleMania 30 is amazing. My review went up about a year or two ago, I think 2015, if I uh, remember correctly. But, um, I mean, you get all the recap of all like the biggest moments from the show on this 24 anyway. So if you want to watch WWE WrestleMania 30 in literally 30 minutes or less... Then you watch this 24 special. But the point I'm trying to make is that um, I, I remember watching WrestleMania 30 this morning, obviously. And one of the things I remember thinking was like, you know what? That Triple H entrance was fucking epic. And he's had a lot of good entrances over the years, over the course of his career at WrestleMania. But that one specifically at WrestleMania 30, when he came out wearing the cape and the king's crown with the women that were Charlotte, Sasha Banks, and Alexa Bliss... What a fucking douche, like, in character. Like, he's such a fucking asshole, but that's why the entrance was so epic. It was so over-the-top and so pompous. It was like, you fucking prick. Like, I can't help but boo you. And that's why that entrance was so amazing. But Triple H talks about it, why it's so over-the-top, why it works so well, because in character, he's such a fucking asshole. And it's a huge moment for Charlotte, Sasha, and Alexa. By that point, Alexa hadn't even debuted on NXT TV yet. So why she was chosen, I guess they were pretty higher, and they were pretty higher on her even then, which is pretty apparent by the fact that she was selected to do this, uh, you know, WrestleMania entrance for Triple H of all people. And they said that themselves. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I think either like, like one of the women said it, but they could have hired models, but they didn't. They brought in Charlotte. They brought in Sasha. They brought in Alexa. And it's crazy to think that two years later, Charlotte and Sasha were a part of that great triple threat at WrestleMania 32. Just two years later for the you know inaugural women's championship for Raw and a WWE Raw women's championship whatever and Alexa wouldn't have her first WrestleMania until this year now she's walking in the SmackDown women's champion so again it all comes full circle and Triple H said that himself he goes this won't be your last rodeo um to quote Triple H after the entrance was over you see Ric Flair crying oh my daughter made it and you know he was crying at WrestleMania uh 32 to you know 2 years later when he accompanied her to the ring while she was wearing Parts of his robe from WrestleMania 24. Uh, so that was pretty cool. I love that entrance, just to kind of talk about it a bit more. Uh, we get a clips and a shot and some footage recap of uh, Hogan, Rock, and Austin kicking off the show, which, again, I can't stress enough, was one of the most amazing openers in WrestleMania history. Match or not, that was fucking amazing. Um, I just remember eating that up every single second of it at the time and watching it back this morning gave me chills. Like, specifically when Stone Cold came out, because by that point, Stone Cold had not been on WWE TV, I believe, in like two and a half, three years. So it was so cool to see him on Raw, or at WrestleMania, and Rock coming back for the first time since the year prior at WrestleMania 29 was great. Hogan being there, getting his first WrestleMania appearance since... Oh, what would it would have been... What would it have been? I think WrestleMania 22? No, 20, I think. Was he even at 20? I think 19 maybe was his last appearance. No, no, 21, because he showed up and he got inducted in the Hall of Fame that year. So 
for the first time in, in nine years appearing at WrestleMania. Just an amazing opening. And you see the guys like discussing it backstage and Shawn Michaels, you know, comes up to him and says, you know, what does that say that the fact that the opening segment was the best thing in the entire show? And I'm pretty sure it took place during the show. He had not yet seen the rest of the event, but he's not wrong. If it wasn't the best part of the show, um, and arguably it wasn't because Daniel Bryan winning the belt wasn't whatever, but it, it came close. It was pretty damn cool. One of the best mania openers of all time, like I said earlier. Uh, Daniel Bryan discusses his win over Triple H. You see him being greeted by Brie Bella once he beats Triple H in the opener. And that would not be the last match he had that night, of course. Uh, we get footage of Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan making up backstage, which, again, all the Warrior footage you've either seen on the special they put together for him on the network or the DVD that came out a year later, which I'm a part of, which is so fucking cool um, to have been a part of that. At least for two seconds, anyway. My video that I put up on YouTube a couple years ago. But anyway, um... Yeah, so we get footage of uh, Warrior and Hogan making up over WrestleMania weekend, which was cool. Mark Crozer, I think is how you pronounce his last name. You get a, a few comments from him talking about Bray Wyatt's entrance, which I think goes under the radar for the fact that Bray Wyatt was not buried by John Cena at WrestleMania 30, but he should not have lost. The match was really not that good. It was a good match, but it wasn't a great match. Their best match came at Payback that year, and the Extreme Rules match fucking sucked. But... The entrance made Bray Wyatt its star. I mean, regardless, win, lose, or draw, and he should have won, that entrance was epic and made Wyatt a star. It was all downhill from there until this year, now finally walking in as WWE champion, where I think he'll lose, but um, uh, the, the live entrance for Mark Crozer and his band for Bray Wyatt, the live performance of, of Bray Wyatt's theme song was pretty damn cool. Um, you kind of see what went into Undertaker's entrance with the caskets, and you see all of Undertaker's past opponents written on the names written on the uh, on the front of the caskets. and You get a longer shot. There was some controversy at the time that CM Punk's casket got quickly... W was not shown enough because they quickly, you know, panned away from it. But they did show pretty in-depth here for a lot more... for more time here, not too much longer than they did at WrestleMania 30 because I think they were showing clips of Taker's past matches. So that's why. It wasn't, I don't think, an intentional thing. Otherwise, they wouldn't have included it in the special. The match sucked, by the way. I don't care... What anyone says. I don't care whether people think it's intentional. The match was awful. Brock and Taker was not a good match. Easily, I'm not the worst match in the show. The women's match fucking sucked, too. Um, this was not Taker's best WrestleMania match by far. Easily the worst in many years, but just not a good match whatsoever. Um, so I really liked how when the streak ended, like all the comments from fans, like I, I can get the facial expressions. I can even get, you know, like the, the iconic... Um, the black dude who's, like, the, with the shocked face. Like, I get that. I even get showing quotes from people in their articles saying, like, oh, is this Undertaker's last match from the Huffington Post and ESPN.com, all these other, you know, mainstream websites. I get that. But showing, like, the Twitter comments was kind of unnecessary, but whatever. It didn't bother me. I just thought it was just kind of unnecessary. But what I really liked about this was that when they were showing Taker getting up and the fans showing respect for him and they kind of you know, drew it out a little bit. They kind of, you know, uh, it was drawn out for quite some time. They aired or they played the theme song of Taker, but the piano version. And I think it was included on some, like, not Uncaged, maybe Uncaged one, but some, like, one of those type of CDs where they had put out with uh, unreleased WWE music from, like, four or five years ago. And Taker's theme song, the piano version, was included and it was played here, and I remember listening, like, I, I remember reading a comment many years ago, like, right after that song officially was released to the public, and I saw, like, a comment on a YouTube video, like, in 2012, 2013, whatever, that said, when Taker retires, I want to hear this theme play on his way out. Granted, it did not play as he was leaving the arena that night, but they did play it over the streak ending on the show for the 24 special, which I thought was pretty cool, and I still say, whenever he does retire, whether it be this year, or they play for the Hall of Fame, whatever. They gotta use that song for when he either leaves, his entrance, the Hall of Fame, whatever. And he's used different themes of Mania before. Like he used Ain't No Grieve, Gonna Hold My Body Down. I think he used that for his WrestleMania 27 entrance. So, it is possible. But anyway, um, we get some... like The big hook for this 24 special going into it for a lot of people was that they were going to show the footage of he, uh, of Taker going to the hospital after being knocked out in his Mania match, which they did acknowledge, apparently, the next night on Raw, which I completely forgot about. But you do see Vince going, oh, we got to get some med, I got to get some help out here, you know, get the medics, whatever. And then you see footage of the ambulance leaving the arena with Taker inside. You don't see Taker inside it. You don't even see Taker being carried out of the arena um, after he goes backstage. I'm pretty sure he collapsed or something. Maybe that was 
SummerSlam 2015. I don't recall. But, um, yeah, they just, you know, they just show random footage of a, of a hospital, which was not the hospital that Taker was in. They didn't really go too much in depth with it at all, which you shouldn't have expected. So if you go into this thinking, oh, my God, they're going to show Taker, like, passed out of the hospital, you're going to be pretty disappointed. And uh, I just remember reading at the time that Taker was hospitalized, and they don't really go too much in depth with it. That was, like, the big hook for this 24 special, that you would see all the footage, and you don't really see more than what was teased in the preview. But it was still cool to see, though. Uh, then we get footage of the main event. Brian says he feels the pressure of having to follow the streak, which is absolutely true. Um, the fact they were able to go out there and have a great match, him, Randy Orton, and Batista for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and all the interference and the storytelling, the in-ring action, and the fact they were able to bring a dead crowd to life, which fucking sat on their hands for the, for the Divas match, which was unsurprising because the match sucked anyway. But the main event started out pretty dull, uh, pretty slow, because the crowd was still dead. They were still reeling from the streak ending, but... Those three guys, their credit, they brought that crowd to life, dude. They really brought that crowd to life. And Mr. Marceau knows because he was there, um, which is, I mean, I, I envy him for being in attendance for this show. It's fucking great. Um, but, yeah, they really felt the pressure. And then uh, they show clips of the match. They show footage of the match. Brian says on his title win that it was surreal, a great moment. It was a moment for the fans. That It was because of them, blah, blah, blah. His mom was in attendance. His sister was in attendance. His two nieces were in attendance. I'm pretty sure they came in the ring. Maybe his sister, too. I know his niece is dead, or at least one of them. His dad was not there. His dad passed away like a week or two after this. So sad, actually. Uh, very unfortunate to hear that. But I don't know why he wasn't at the show. I don't know if he was sick at the time. I just thought he passed away randomly. But he might have been sick, which is why he didn't go to Mania. I'm not exactly sure why the mom would be there and not the dad. Um, but he talks to Connor afterwards, who was in the front row of the show, and he's like, uh, thank you for being strong, thank you for all your support, which is really cool considering the fact that, again, um, Connor had also passed away later on that month as well. Like, da Daniel Bryan's father passed away, Warrior passed away, Connor passed away. April 2014, man, other than WrestleMania, including the streak, and it was a pretty sad month for wrestling fans. And then Bryan got hurt that month, it was, it just sucked. Um, but still, a touching moment to close out this special, because we also get a WrestleMania 30 recap, um, like, you know, just a general completion that they did for the WrestleMania 32 one, I'm pretty sure they did for 31 as well, just a recap of what happened that weekend at the Hall of Fame, Mania itself, and all the festivities, all that other great stuff, they tie into one, just great video package, they always do so well. So that is it, guys. That is WrestleMania 30, the episode of WWE 24. The inaugural episode of WWE 24 is WrestleMania 30. Check it out. WrestleMania 30 is a great show. I would just recommend you watch the entire show in its entirety. In the entire show in its entirety. Just watch the full show is what I'm saying. It was a great WrestleMania. Uh, one of the better ones in recent memory, in my opinion. So reliving it through the lens of, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff, the, everything that went into it for the entrances and the wins and everything else... They also showed an in memory of Connor and Warrior after it ended too. I forgot to mention that. But yeah, I give this two thumbs up. Every 24 special, even the ones on like Roman Reigns and Booker T, which aren't like all that newsworthy, they're still pretty well done. Um, and they're always great to watch. So I would recommend checking that this one out, all of them out, but specifically this one as we're talking about it here today on WWE Network and Chill um, on the WWE Network ahead of WrestleMania 33 this Sunday. So on the topic of such, as I said earlier, guys, stay tuned to the channel all week long for exclusive content from WrestleMania Weekend as they will be there on site for the show on Saturday and Sunday for TakeOver WrestleMania on Sunday and WrestleMania Access, respectively, on Saturday. So stay tuned for that stuff by subscribing to the channel. Like this video, leave a comment, share the video. All your support is amazingly appreciated. And that's about it. So like I said earlier, guys, stay tuned tomorrow for my full retrospective review review, excuse me, of WrestleMania 32 one year later. You're not going to want to miss it for my scathing rants, my candid thoughts on WrestleMania 32 one year later. So with that being said, guys, join me next week for an all-new episode of WWE Network and Chill next Monday. I believe we're going to be talking about the WWE 24 special that airs tonight after Raw, so it's pretty cool I'll how I'm talking about this one right now. I think tonight airs the, you know, the Raw after WrestleMania one uh, from the Raw after WrestleMania last year. So I'm looking forward to talking about that next week, hopefully, right here. Um, I'll be flying home from Orlando, but I'll probably post the video before I leave. Um, but yeah, so stay tuned for that next Monday, my review of WWE 24, the Raw after WrestleMania 32. So until then, guys, enjoy WrestleMania week. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road to WrestleMania.